Hey everyone, I hope you are having a great day. I come here um, with a message of hope. Um, if you ever felt, or you have a team member, if you wanna share this with them, ever just feel like, why am I, what do I feel like I'm always uh, failing in my business? And, and what I wanna do today is I wanna walk through the four observations of why we feel that way and then how to work through those and how to fix them um, through some skill development, through a little bit of planning. And I, I think that you're going to find at least something in this video really, really useful for you. So um, hang in there. I do have a very cool tool for you to help you not feel what I would call like entrepreneur, multiple personality issues. And so if you want that, just write balance in the comments here and we'll help you with that. And then if you want to work together um, in our customer for sales mastermind or resilient leader mastermind um, to work through some of these challenges so that you can really grow and, you know, really, you know, thrive in your business, then uh, make sure you let me know and we'll talk about it. So let's talk about the four things um, that make us feel like we're always behind the eight ball. Uh, first, we're going to talk about entrepreneurial multiple personalities. Second, we'll talk about the law of the lid. Third, we're going to talk about lack of strengths alignment. And fourth, we're going to talk about wording. Uh, so full disclosure, a lot of this um, conversation I have learned through the school of hard knocks, which means I've experienced firsthand the pain of each of these. So that either makes me less qualified to talk about it because I also struggle with these or more qualified, I'll let you decide. Um, the first one is this like multiple personalities of the entrepreneur. And I, I don't wanna use the word multiple personality disorder. I don't wanna disrespect people who have uh, mental health issues. Um, but what I was finding is that, like, it was breaking my brain. Um, I, for the past two, three to four months, I felt like I was losing my mind. I felt like no matter what I did that was good, also I was doing a bad job. And I think it was because I was playing a game of whack-a-mole. And I went back to this exercise my business coach um, has me do periodically, and it was making an org chart. And so I made an org chart of all the jobs that I have in my company if I were to hire them out to people. So instead of it just being me and Karen and some VAs um, that do some backend stuff, I broke it down by actual role. And what I found is that I have the role of a business owner. I have the role of the head coach. I actually have the role of the assistant coach. I have the role of content marketer. Um, and there was one other one that I can't remember. And then Karen had her five jobs. <laughs> and um, I realized is that I was overlaying every single one of those. And when you have four jobs, it's impossible to do all of them really, really well. And so I was having this like loop in my mind. I'm like, I'm not doing a good job. I'm not doing a good job. And I was like, yeah, you are. Yeah, you are. Yeah, you are. And then finally I realized that actually over that period of several months, the content marketer was doing a good job. The coach was doing a good job, but the business owner had dropped some balls um, because there's just a lot of them when you're looking at uh, four different jobs. And that actually gave me a lot of freedom because I was like, oh, it's not me that is working so hard and is struggling. It's this, it's like, there's coach Tasha, there's content manager Tasha, there's community manager Tasha, there's business owner Tasha. And business owner Tasha needs a little attention. She needs a, a performance plan and we need to get her back going. And just like separating out those roles was really, really helpful. And I know that if I'm experiencing this, and this is likely something that each of you are experiencing as well, because in your role, you have business owner, right? The person that makes the decisions, builds the partnerships. And then you have like sales manager, salesperson, recruiting, like VP of HR, um, account executive who's in charge of retention. You have like five, six, seven roles inside of your business. And so I think it just breaks our brain to have so many jobs. Um, and I know that we wouldn't want to go back to, you know, we don't want to stay in corporate with our one job. It never changes forever and ever and ever. Um, it just becomes really challenging. And so I think that really messes with our head. And 
what I want to show you is this uh, tool that I made a while ago to help fix some of this. Um, it's called the Weekly Accelerator. And if this is helpful for you guys, if you could just chime in on the comments, that would be great. Sometimes it feels lonely here. And so basically you print this out. Um, and as you're right, you kind of give jobs to there's like marketing department or networking department. There's the enrolling or sales department. There's a the retention department. And then there's the people in charge of leadership. And those are four different jobs. And so at the beginning of the week, you can just write down or for a two week period, or even you can do this for a month. I don't think it matters. You can just write down, okay, networking. This is your job this month. This is what success looks like. Enrolling person. This is your job. Retention. This is your job. Recruiting leadership. This is your job. Uh, one of my friends, Jenna, who is a performance coach, um, also the owner of Group Track, what she does with her clients is then she takes each of these roles and puts them on a day. So like networking person comes to work on Mondays, enrolling person comes to work on Tuesdays, retention person focuses on Wednesdays, recruiting leadership is Thursdays and Fridays, like whatever's left over or something like that. I think that you can, and what I'm working on right now is rearranging my coaching schedule. So it's just not so all over the place. Um, so that the content manager isn't doing like 45 minutes in between coaching calls. Cause that's really hard in order to be successful. And then I also think it's important to write down the wins, the lessons where you get stuck so that each of your, I'll just call them employees in your company, they're able to do well. I've talked a lot about like the CEO and the employee you, but I actually will assert now after going through what I've gone, gone through in the past six months that you have one CEO and then you have four, actually four employees, uh, someone in charge of networking, enrolling, retention, recruiting. And so write those down. And so it's very possible that you could have three people killing it and one person struggling. That doesn't mean you're doing a bad job. It just means that person needs to be propped up a little bit or that department needs to be propped up. And I think that kind of clarity is really a lot more powerful um, for our self-esteem. So as soon as I realized, okay, coach Tosh is doing great. Content marketer Tosh is doing great. Business owner Tasha needs to get back to some reading some entrepreneurship books and getting her head back on and carving out a whole half day on business design. I will tell you instantly, just knowing that was a problem made me feel so much better. And then I realized I had to invest in business owner Tasha because we'd been investing in all the other people and not that person. Uh, so that's that's the first thing. Entrepreneurial multiple personalities. Let's see if we can get that sorted. Uh, the second is uh, called the law of the lid. It's also called the Peter principle. And the idea is that we rise to our level of incompetence. So there was a situation in our customer first mastermind yesterday where a couple of people were basically like, I'm failing at retention because I'm enrolling so many people. And it was like, okay, this success has now made me unsuccessful. And I remember one of my clients, um, Daniela, she's a million dollar earner in her company. And um, she told me like the way network marketing works, I'm gonna use her analogy because it's much smarter than what I've ever, I've ever come up with, is like a video game. So you play the first level and you don't really need so many. And then as soon as you win that level, you go up a level, and then immediately you die until you figure out how to use the tools of that level. And then as soon as you're successful at that level, you immediately go up to the next level and then you need the tools of the next level. But what I realized is that the first thing you do when you pass one level is you die, right? You don't die in the level. So it's like, think about Super Mario Brothers. Like you run, you jump, you get the, you, you on the flagpole, you go down and then you go up to the next level and then you have no idea what that level looks like and then you die. And then you die and you cannot get through that next level un without dying. Like that's normal. And so what I tell my clients is I think so many people, especially from our corporate backgrounds or just like kind of the way society has us. So like, I just want to feel confident. I just want to feel competent. I just want to know what I'm doing. And I just want um, to feel like, I'm competent. And I was like, competence and confidence is not the goal. And here's why. In the game of corporate, um, and if this is so any of this is landing for you, let me know. Um, thank you, Kendra, for sharing about e-myth. Yes, 100%. Um, so 
now I lost my thought while I was reading that comment. Dang it! Shoot. Okay. Oh, competence. I'm looking at my notes here. Uh, competence isn't the goal. Impact is the goal. So what will happen is as soon as you become competent in an area, when you're in corporate, they're like, awesome, you stay here forever. And that's why we get bored and feel dead inside. We need more, right? Entrepreneurship is like, oh, you're competent, Tasha, at one-on-one coaching. Boom. Now you have so many clients that you're not going to be able to one-on-one coach them all. Have fun figuring out group coaching. Oh, you have so many clients in group coaching that you can't message them all directly. Good luck with automation, right? Every single time I've mastered something, it automatically kicks me up to the next level of which I don't have systems for because I haven't encountered it. And so what I've started to learn is that incompetence, if I'm feeling incompetent, that's actually a success indicator. It means that I've mastered something else. And that's what happened with this client. She was felt like she was failing at retention because she was enrolling so many new customers. Uh, one of my clients, Kirsten, she really has worked very hard on building her belief in herself and some of her initial recruiting processes and customer acquisition processes. And she recruited not seven, seven new builders last week. And so now she's feeling like, oh my gosh, I, right, I'm incompetent. She didn't say that. Um, I don't want to put words in her mouth. It was just like, okay, shoot, now I'm not able to keep up and I feel like I'm not doing a good job as a leader. But really all that needed to happen is she needed to create, she went up, she up leveled. And so she needed a different tool in order to handle that particular level. So we have to upgrade our systems as we grow. It's kind of like, this is the best way I think I understand. It's like our toddler who's like, I just want to wear these shorts forever. And you're like, that's going to be a problem because you're going to outgrow them. And so whatever level of success that we have, like if our toddler could wear those shorts forever, that's a different issue. And your business isn't supposed to look the same forever because you're supposed to outgrow the level you're in. And so if we're clinging to this, like I want to be comfortable in my business as the goal, I just don't think we're going to make as big of an impact. You know, I filled up my one-on-one -on -one coaching practice in six weeks back in 2016. And it immediately kicked me up. But guess what? I was able to do more impact. I was able to build my business solely through referrals. But then it, right, then I couldn't impact. I hit a level where I couldn't impact more people until I learned how to do advertising. And now we're like, okay, we mastered that, but I can't help more people until I master probably Instagram, right? So, and then now I feel like, oh, you know what I'm doing, right? Well, that's actually, I think, a good place to be. So number two, law of the lid. Um, I think if we shift our goal from um, not like I want to feel confident, but maybe I want to impact as many people as possible. I think that's other centered instead of self-centered. I think we'll do better. Uh, the third thing that makes us sometimes feel like we're failing is when we're um, not aligned with our strengths. So I don't know if you guys have taken the strengths finder profile. We work with our, um, our clients using the strengths finder profile. Because we want to make sure that you have a business that is aligned with your strengths so they're able to enjoy it more, do better, right? All that stuff. So Jamie um, was struggling. Her upline, super smart, awesome, great extrovert. So Jamie was like, I need more contacts. And so her upline was like, let's just go walk around downtown this shopping center. We'll go into stores and see who wants to partner with us. And she was like, oh my gosh, I hate this. And she, um, I remember interviewing a long time ago, she said she was suffocating. And our upline is awesome. They have a great relationship. It wasn't anything that was bad. But what we found is it wasn't aligned with what she found joy in and what her strengths were. Because Jamie was a little bit more introverted. Um, and she had a really big passion specifically for gut health versus her upline had a different passion. And so what we did is we created what's called like a, uh, what did I call it? A lead generation strategy that makes you leap for joy. I know that's so cheesy, but we aligned her like relationship building talents and we worked with her to uh, make a plan to partner with health coaches. And her team went from 13 new customers one month to 33 new customers the next month because she was in a good place, right? Um, and so we need to be aligned with our strengths. So when she was comparing herself to what her upline was doing, she felt like she was failing. And what we needed to do was make sure that we were using her strengths and talents and her interests too. Um, 
I'm not so interested in traveling all the time. Um, I want to be home. I'm a routine person. So we align our lead generation strategy with things that don't force me to travel, um, you know, unless it's really, really good and that's worth it. Uh, the fourth thing is uh, just wording. And shoot, I wanted to pull this up because I thought this was so cool. Um, sometimes we are failing. And so I started by telling the story about how, you know, I had these four different roles. And I actually felt vindicated when I realized that as the business owner, I was doing, I was dropping the ball. That doesn't sound right because we want to be able to pat. But that like feedback was really important to me because then I knew I could fix it. And so we had a an instance in, in our mastermind yesterday. So we were talking about retention practices and wording. And one of our clients, and I'm going to read some of this, she just said, she posted later yesterday, she said, okay, I think I've been doing it wrong for so long. Learning lessons takes up some of your texting ideas. This is what I came up with an invite to tonight's workshop. It's not perfect, but I'm moving in the right direction. So she said normally, because she's so discouraged, she, you know, felt like she was failing. She said normally she would send 192 texts and she would get five to six responses. And so she, her argument to me in the mastermind was retention efforts aren't worth it. I said, or could we do better? So I taught her a, a framework. She wrote it here, lead in, offering, including, because, ask for action. And she says, am I getting it? And I was like, huh, totally. So here's the text she sent. A lot of people are already looking for holiday gift ideas. Tonight we're offering a Zoom at 8 p.m. Central, gearing up for the holidays. I wanted to be sure to shoot you this reminder. You may want to check this out because some new gift items are being released next week. Would you like the link for tonight? In 40 minutes, okay, I want. Uh, here's what I want to tell you. Because sometimes when we feel like we're failing, we actually need to make a change. We don't need to just like make ourselves feel better. She normally would get five responses out of 192 texts. We added some skill and some structure and she got 41 responses in 40 minutes to the 192 texts. She eight times her results in less than an hour. Sometimes our wording is just not that good. And we feel like we're failing because maybe we actually are. And this is why I think it's so important. Um, shoot, I lost the thing. Uh, to look at this weekly accelerator and to say, okay, well, gosh, I reached out to 192 people and I only got five responses. And you might not know if that's good or bad. That's why mentorship or coaching is so helpful. Because I was like, I think we can do better than that. And we wrote something that was good and she got, she did better. So, I mean, I think this comes down to, you know, what I, what I started with is there's four reasons that we feel like we're failing. One is just the multiple roles. Two is, I mean, it's impossible to be perfect in multiple roles all at the same time. So one of you, one of your personalities is going to be both not exactly where you want to be in that season, but you can fix that. Number two is the law of the lid. We rise to the level of our incompetence. So we change our goal from competence or confidence and to know what I'm doing. And we change it to impact. How many people am I impacting each day? Uh, the third is lack of strengths alignment. So we align um, our strategies with things that we're good at. Um, I love the Gallup Strengths Finder assessment to help start with that. But you probably need some help there. And then the fourth is let's fix our wording to make sure that it works better. Um, ultimately, you know, the role of the business owners is just to fix it. We need to move away from why am I failing? Which is where I was for like three or four months. Um, and then I had a day off and I was like, okay, why am I failing? There's a difference between why and why. And I went through everything I could think of and did a massive audit on my business and was like, oh, here's why, here's why. Um, and then we fix it. And there's so much hope when we can identify the problem and then we fix it. If we want a business that's 100% stable, which is, I mean, frankly, it's what I want too. Um, I don't know if it's always going to go like that. And maybe that being the goal is something that's really setting ourselves up for some failure in the way we look at our business. Um, I think that impact is the goal. And I think some months and quarters will impact more people than others. 
but the role of the business owner, because I looked it up, I was like, what is the job of a small business owner? Because I don't even know if I'm doing a good job. Um, I know the role of coaches, but what's the role of a business owner? And it was basically summed up in the articles I wrote, like, find problems in your business and fix them. And I felt really a lot better because it wasn't like grow every quarter, no matter what it was, pay attention to what's happening in the market, find problems, fix them, invest in your team. Now in our company, I am three of those team members. <laughs> um, so that means I'm going to invest in myself, but I thought that was really, really uh, helpful for me. And I thought it'd be helpful for you. So I have a couple of um, ideas that I think that'll help you into action. First, just type the word balance in the chat or comments or whatever. And then, or if there's a link around this and we'll send you this and I want you to give it a go for four weeks and see if that helps you to feel more successful and not only feel more successful, but be more successful, like get more stuff done because you can take one day and work on one, one day work on another and not drop the ball. Um, and the second action that I want you to take is to commit to being a problem fixer in your business. Most people who get into business, they're problem solvers. They want to solve other people's problems. But here's where I'm going to encourage you. I want you to fix your own problems. Um, I use, I'll use this analogy when I think about problem solving. And it's like, so let's say a pipe burst or there's a leak in your house. What would you do? We wouldn't sit there and go, why? What's wrong with me as a homeowner? I'm the worst homeowner. Oh my gosh. Like that person doesn't have a leaky, like their pipe didn't burst. They're probably better homeowner than I am. I, my mom told me I would not be a good homeowner and see, she was right. And I don't even deserve a home. No, we're like, Oh, broke. Shoot. We turn off the water. Some of you might know how to fix it. I wouldn't, I would just turn off the water and then I would call someone to come in and fix it. And they would tell me what was broken and then we would fix it and we would move on with our life. We wouldn't have a lot of drama. What if we could do the same thing for our business? What if instead of noticing, oh shoot, this thing is broken. I don't have enough contacts. Instead of going, why? I took a step back and was like, okay, here's a problem. I don't know the answer. I know you might know the answer or not. If you know the answer, fix it. And if not, I don't know the answer. I need to ask an expert to come in here, look at it, fix it, tell me what to fix, and then I'll go fix it. Uh, that's what I want to encourage you guys to do today. So I hope this was helpful. If it was, if you could just let me know which piece of it was helpful, because then I can take these smaller pieces, write them down, and um, we can put them on Instagram, we can put them on TikTok, the smaller ones. So it's really, really helpful if you let me know what of these longer videos um, you have found helpful or encouraging or things, actions you're going to take. Um, if you guys want to talk about how to work together to fix the problems in your business, just let us know. We're here to help and I'll talk to you guys soon.